What's going on everyone? This is uh, Jay Ramos, uh, wall education, um, video wall education. Um, Want to uh, talk to you guys about this haircut we're going to do. I uh, want to do a modern mullet. So before we get into it, just to give you a little bit of background on who I am. Uh, barber for 18 years. I started off in my career as a licensed cosmetologist for the first two years of my 18 year career. Fell in love with barbering, decided to switch over. Um, traveled the world, traveled uh, all over the country, doing education for wall clippers. And like I said today, we're gonna do a clipper cutting. I'll show you a couple of different techniques. Um, all clipper work, I'm not gonna use any scissors, but that doesn't mean that I don't use scissors. I still use scissors, I still use thinning shears and all that. Um, but I just think that it's great to be able to know um, any technique that's out there because sometimes it can also help you to do you finish your haircut a little quicker than the norm so uh, oh yeah and a little information on wall wall has been around for a hundred years first electric magnetic clipper that came out was 1919 and uh, they're headquartered in Sterling Illinois so and if anybody's wondering where I am I'm from New York Long Island New York I'm right now in my barber shop um, just uh, gonna have a blast doing this haircut for you guys so like I said this is a modern mullet so what I did was I sectioned it off in four different sections so you guys noticed one two three and four now the reason why I sectioned it off this way is because when I do mullets depending on the length of hair I like to do my work as clean as possible that way I can have full control so if you have a customer that walks in and you know wants something modern, trendy, and you know you kind of steer them into a, a mullet, doing it this way really helps me do my haircut a lot easier. So what I did was I did a U-shaped parting from recession area back to the crown, all the way around to the recession area. And then what I did was I did another section from behind the ear split right before right bef uh, right before the mastoid bone. I did that on both sides. You guys can see that. So when you do the modern mullet or you do a mullet in particular, or basically any haircut, it doesn't really matter which side you start on, right or left, depending on if you're a lefty or a righty. I'm a righty, so uh, I'm used to starting on the right side. Now, before you do any haircut, what you really, what you need to do is you need to have, do client consultation, which cl client consultation is very important because nine times out of 10, when your customer comes in and it's a new new customer, they're not too sure exactly what they want. I don't know if that's happened to you guys. Sometimes I get a customer that sits in the chair and says, I wanna just give me a, a small trim um, all around. And a small trim to me is this much, but a small trim to them could be this much or vice versa. Or sometimes you'll have customers that come in or sit in your chair and they say, give me a two on the sides and four on top. And then as soon as you do that, it's not what they wanted. So remember, we also have to understand um, exactly what they mean. Um, part of the client consultation that I, no, I normally like to do is I like to do something I call the scalp analyzation. Now scalp, an, scalp analyzation is real simple and it's also I believe it's very important to do. So you're gonna take your comb and you're just gonna comb throughout the whole head of your customer and what you're doing at the same time is you're combing all any little knots out, you're seeing the natural hair fall, you're feeling the cranial structure, feeling any imperfections, any divots, or any little uh, bumps or anything like that. Uh, also looking for any scars or any protruding areas. So now you, now you have a better understanding on how to properly shape and structure uh, your client's haircut. So I went ahead and I did that. Obviously it's a mannequin, but I went ahead and I did that. So the first thing what we're gonna do is, and if anybody's wondering why I'm not wearing a mask, I am the only one in my establishment. So it's just me and my mannequin. So that's the reason why I'm not wearing a mask. But don't forget to wear your masks. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up my wall cleaning clip here. Make sure that we thoroughly disinfect our tools. Now if you're using a wall cleaning clip, this is a hospital grade disinfectant. Disinfects thoroughly in two minutes. I'm just showing you guys how to do it. Obviously I already disinfected my tools. And the three tools of choice today that I'm gonna be using is my wall cordless senior, my wall 100 anniversary clipper, and my wall cordless detailer. 
Now, some of you guys might be asking, why am I using these, these uh, three clippers? Now, the difference between these two clippers are the blades. Now, if we look at the blades here, we notice that one is flat. See how this one has, it's flat here. And this one has a slight little belly to it. So this is what we call our, our, our fading precision blade. And this is what we call our, our standard blade. Now I'm gonna be using the clippers simultaneously depending on what part of the haircut I'm working on. So the first thing to do if we're gonna work on a mullet is obviously we, a mullet is short on the sides, longer on the top, I'm sorry, longer in the back, and then the top is customizable to whatever your client's liking is. I like to use a lot of texture in my haircuts, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna give them a lot of aggressive texture. So, so the first thing I'm gonna do is we need to bring down the hair on the sides here. I'm gonna bring this up so you guys can see. Now for this, I'm gonna be using a clip over comb technique, or you can also use a number eight guard, uh, just a, a, a long length guard, so you don't take off too much hair. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open my adjustment lever, because don't forget, when you close your adjustment lever, this is a zero, and then when you open it, it becomes into a half. That's what a lot of us in the industry know it as. So I'm gonna open it up as a half, and I'm gonna remove a lot of this bulk. I'm gonna cut about half its length. So that's about half. All I'm gonna do is gonna go straight across my comb, pick the hair up again. And if you notice, as I work my way down, I lightly tapered in. So when I pick the hair up, it goes from short to medium to longer. So now I'm gonna go and do the same thing, but just a little tighter. Now, the reason why I'm also working with my adjustment lever open is because if I close my adjustment lever and I do the same thing I just did, I'm gonna get more of a precision cut. Now, this is important, especially when you're connecting the sides to the top in your transition area right here, because you want the flow to be as natural as possible. So you're able to achieve that, especially if you open your adjustment lever. So with my adjustment lever open, now I'm gonna set about the length of where I want my haircut to start, and I'm gonna start working it up. And the other thing that is really important as you do this, that you're never flush against the head. The reason why you wanna be flush against the head is you wanna slightly pivot outwards from this area because you're gonna need length of hair here to connect it to the back. Now that's one of the biggest things that I've noticed that a lot of people do when they create their mullets is if they're not too sure on how to connect the sides to the back. You'll notice sometimes you'll, you'll see customers walking around with this literally cut or shaved and then just long lengths of hair. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to connect that. In order to do that, we need to leave the back just slightly a little longer. So I'm gonna go back in with my just on my open, and I'm just creating the area where I'm gonna put his fade in. Now for anyone out there that's trying to uh, learn a clipper over comb technique, here's a little cool trick. If you have a wall comb, just like this one here, right? If you guys notice a little groove in the bottom here. Now this little groove is for the corner of your blade, for any wall clipper, the corner of their blade to fit in the groove perfectly. Now you know where to start and where to stop. Where to start, where to stop. So that what happens is that eventually over time you're able to build, build up muscle memory that when you eat, when you switch off in any comb, you'll remember how far to go out, how far to come in. And another cool trick is also your comb, the way you hold your comb. A lot of us hold our comb this way, a lot of us hold our comb this way. The ideal way is to hold the comb in the palm of your hand with your fingers wrapped around. So that way, if you overextend, you hit the outside of your comb and the comb isn't gonna go anywhere. Now, if you hold it this way and you're doing clip over comb and you hit the outside, the clip is, I'm sorry, the comb is gonna travel through and you're gonna just buzz off whatever you were working on. So again, going back to my adjustment lever open. Now I'm just going in and refining because what I wanna do is eventually I wanna place a little fade right here in his, in his uh, um, in the sideburn area. So you guys notice as it's tight down here, as it gradually goes up, you'll notice that it, it gets longer, but the back here, right where the ear split begins, that's where my longest length of hair is. And this is what I wanna keep. This is ideal for the mullet. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn them to the other side because what we do on one side, we need to do on the other. There we go. So like I said, I already previously parted all the hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and first knock off the half the length, remove all the bulk. And I am working with my adjustment lever open. So that's about half. So now taking a visual length guide from his previously cut side, I'm gonna match that up to his left side. Again, coming in tight at the bottom, wearing the teeth of my comb slightly outwards towards myself, and then slowly working my way up. And as you notice, I'm leaving the hair right where the ear split is slightly longer than the rest. Now as I'm coming in, I'm scooping the hair up and flaring the teeth of the comb slightly outwards. Now I'm gonna go a little tighter, especially in the area where I wanna apply the fade. Now, the fade that I wanna eventually create right in the sideburns area, a lot of you guys might know it as a taper, skin taper. Now I'm just done here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and trim it around. So you can see we got both sides done already. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my tool. So for anyone that just logged on, I was using my wall 100 anniversary clipper, standard blade, it's cord cordless. So that means that if it dies on me, I can just plug the cord in and I can keep working. And as I keep working, the battery keep charging, which is pretty cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my wall cordless senior. Now, the reason why I switched over to this one is because it has a high precision blade. And I remember when I was talking about these two clippers, my Wall 100 Anniversary Clipper has a, what we call a standard blade, as you can see the little hump here. My Wall Cordless Senior has a flat blade. Notice the back is flat. So that's ideal when I work on, uh, on scalp putting. So what I wanna do is, again, I don't wanna bring this fade up too high. So one of the, a trick that you guys can use is when you're working with no guards, and then I know, I know sometimes this is a little scary when you're working with no guard. Work with one whole guard higher than what you really want to start. I normally start with no guard, plain blade, zero. But if you guys are a little intimidated by that way, apply your number one guard, open your adjustment lever, start in front of the ear, come up, and at the tip of the ear and the top of the ear, Scoop out. As so. Now we're gonna go ahead and close our adjustment lever. Repeat the same step, just slightly lower. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is, if I know that I scooped out right here, with my adjustment lever open, I'm gonna close my adjustment lever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close my adjustment lever and scoop out slightly lower. So about here. So already you guys can see the taper effect in his sideburn area, but we wanna get down even closer. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our adjust, um, sorry, we're gonna take down our number one guard, and then from here, we're gonna open our adjustment lever and repeat the same step. So for anyone that doesn't know, this is called reverse graduation. This technique can be applied to any haircut, no matter what number you're doing. For example, if you're doing um, a four on top and a one on the sides, you can do four, three, two, one. So in this case, I started with my number one open and then worked my way down from a one open to a one closed to no guard open which is what I'm currently doing now I'm gonna close it just one over halfway repeat the same exact step now I'm gonna fully close my adjustment lever As you guys can see, 
we've got that nice little taper going on. But if you want to take it, take it up a notch and you want to really get it down the skin, that's when we're going to come in and use our wall cordless detailer. Again, lithium ion battery cord cordless, high precision blade. Now with this, normally when we use an outliner, when we use an, uh, a, a trimmer, we use it this way. But if we want to bring this hair down, this stubble down, down the skin, we're going to flip it over and use it just like a clipper. And we're just going to flare gently using C-scoop technique. And take a look at that, guys. That's real nice and close. So, what we do on one side, we must do on the other. So now that we finished his right side, we're gonna go ahead and start working on his left side. So for anyone that tuned in, just tuned in, so what we did on his right side was we clippered over combed, then we went ahead and used our number one attachment guard fully open. Starting at the bottom, working our way up. And using our C scoop technique, coming right out. Now this, we're determining by the top of the ear. So at the top of the ear is where we're gonna start scooping out. And then from here, we're gonna close our adjustment lever. Repeat the same step. But the only difference is we're gonna start scooping out a little lower than where we previously did with our one open. From here, we're gonna switch over, take our number one off, open our adjusting lever, start in front of the ear, and scoop out. Now, if you're able to control your clipper as smoothly as I am, then you're able to create this taper effect right here. Hey, Jay. Hey, buddy. Did you get the stuff yet or what? Uh, can you give me a little bit? I'm just on the Facebook Live. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. I'll get back to you. Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, as, I was, as I was saying, starting right in front of the ear again with our chest and lever open. Now I'm going to close my adjustment over halfway. And then I'm going to close it fully. And as you guys can see, we got a nice little taper going on there. But again, if we want to bring it down real close, that's when we're gonna go ahead and switch over to our wall cordless detailer. Again, turning it over to use it as a clipper. Coming up, flaring out, c scoop technique. Now you can see that it's real close. And we have our taper on both sides. Now I have one more surprise for you. If we want to get the little bit of stubble that's left real down the skin to a razor-like finish, that's when we can use our wall finale. So with our finale is, the technology in the foil blades will not allow any long lengths of hair to pass through, only stubble. So that means I'll be able to take off the stubble that's left here. So I want, to, I want you guys to see this real up close. There, even though I hit it with that high precision shimmer blade, yeah, there's still a little bit of stubble left. So if I take my finale, and I bring it over, Razor-like finish, no stubble at all. Do that on the same on the other side. Voila. Now this is super important also for a lot of you guys that are attempting to do skin fades. A lot of times that's the that's the, the, the number one problem is when a client comes in and sits down and says, I like to get a skin fade. 
and we battle with achieving the skin part of it. Normally, a lot of times we uh, will try to work with our clippers, but we still want to remove that stubble and our client wants to remove that stubble. That's when you can use one of these. So now that we finished with the sides, now we're gonna go ahead and start working on the, start working on the top. So you guys can notice, start seeing that, that mullet start to, start to form. So when working with clippers, even though our clippers cut through wet, dry, damp hair. I still like to use my clippers on slightly damp hair. Not too wet. And again, I'm just applying some water just to have better control of my customers or mannequin's head. And also when working with a mannequin, don't forget guys, it's always important to wash it, wash his hair or her hair, because that way you're just able to get all the little knots out. And a little secret too is you apply a little bit of conditioner. I always do apply a little conditioner on my mannequins, especially when I teach a class, um, when I'm live. It just makes it easier. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna remove length. So even though I took the clip in the back out, so you guys can start seeing that mullet start to come to life. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my wall 100 anniversary clipper. And what I wanna do is I wanna take about one inch partings. Now we're gonna remove a lot of length first. So we're gonna go about there. And then when you're working with a clipper, you wanna start in front with the adjustment lever close. When you get to your Second knuckle, this is when you're gonna to pivot towards yourself to be able to get that nice, clean cut. Now, some of you guys are probably asking yourselves, why would I use a clip over a shear? My personal uh, response is just, it looks cool. I can get the job done a little quicker. Um, and especially there's that number one rule, if a lot of us are still in school at the moment, the one thing that we're taught heavily is that when using shears, you never cut past your second knuckle. And why is that? If you cut past your second knuckle, from your second knuckle inward, you lose tension. So every cut that you do past your second knuckle, nine times out of 10 will be uneven. And if you repeat that, no matter if you're working on the top, the back or the sides, your haircut won't be 100% even. And you'll be going back and doing a lot of cross check. So now that I did my first cut, I'm gonna go ahead and use my previously cut hair, if you guys can see that here. That's my guide and the new length that I'm cutting. Start in front of my, pivoting towards myself, second knuckle. I'm gonna keep working past the apex. Now I'm working right where the crown starts, but if you notice, I'm not following the shape of the head. What I'm doing here is the last part that I'm picking up, this portion here is part of the crown, but for this mullet purposes, I wanna pick it up so that way when I cut it, I'm already establishing my guide, my length guide, because from the apex here, it's shorter than from the crown to the back. Now that I finished on right in the front, I'm gonna move over slightly away from me, picking up some hair. And if you notice, you can see the previously cut hair. And here is the new hair that I need to cut. So the other thing is, and I've noticed this firsthand when I'm working in my shop, by me doing this, it's kind of like a, it, it draws attention to the people that are, that's inside the shop. 
you have no idea how many times that I'll have customers getting cut by other my other barbers at the shop and they're asking what's what's he doing what's Jay doing why is he cutting the hair like that you know it's it's something different um, I also think it's it's pretty cool because a lot of customers will be like hey listen I just got my hair cut by this guy that just does all the clipper work but it came out fantastic you know it just it, it separates you a little bit from the rest if you notice I'm working all the way up every single piece that I grab I make sure that I have proper touching from the bottom and I lift all the way straight up And again, when I get past the apex, right in the crown area, I bring the hair all the way up, 90 degrees up. Now, another little uh, advice is that if you're trying this for the first time, every time that you go back to comb and pick up the hair, turn your clipper off. I have had uh, done hands-on classes where I guess they forget that I say every time you're combing hair, turn your clipper off, and when I turn around, I'll see little bald spots in the mannequin head. So, because if you're not using proper control, as you comb, you come in to comb, and your clippers turn on, you're going to be able to be able to cut off a good amount. Again, just picking up all the hair straight up. And as you notice, as I get towards the back, I slightly pick up some hair from the crown area. But again, I'm not bringing it all the way up. Now that now that I'm done with that, we're gonna go ahead and do slight some crossword check. And let me grab my hairspray. Hairspray, I'm sorry, water bottle. Now we're here, we're just going to go ahead and cross check. Cross check is no different than as if you were using your shears. Again, just picking up hair straight up, taking off whatever is slightly uneven. Now, for anyone that's tuning in, don't get freaked out. We still have to connect the sides to the top and the sides to the back. Now, now we're gonna add texture before we finish connecting. So this is this is the uh, this is the fun part. A lot of times, I've been told that you can't create texture or point cut with your clippers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right in the center. Now remember, here's the crown. The last cut that I did was right, right where the crown started. So here's my length guide, which is longer from being placed from the crown to the back than opposed from the crown to the apex. Now since this hair is medium to long length, I'm just gonna go ahead and find my length guide, which is right here. I'm gonna slightly angle my hand, and come in and point cut. I just create a texture. Now I'm gonna grab another piece.
So this is my first section that I just cut. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of the previously cut section into my new section that I'm gonna cut. Now remember, we want to keep majority of length down here, so it can come as a layered effect, coming from short to medium to long. Here's my last section. So as you guys can see, the whole mall is starting to take more shape now. You want to be able to preserve the majority of length in the bottom because that's his longest portion of his hair. Working on my last section. And then also, you go ahead and clean up the bottom. I'm gonna bring the hair all the way down with no elevation and again point cut and what we're also going to do is we're going to add texture on the top Again, remember guys, I said I like to always use a lot of aggressive texture, so I'm gonna go ahead and start that. All I'm doing is picking up the hair, cross-checking, as if I were cross-checking, and just point cutting, coming down at an angle. Bringing up the hair all the way straight up. Now we don't want to forget to always clean up the front area, so we're going to go ahead and bring the hair fully down. Again, the idea is not to give them bangs, but just to clean up the front.
you guys can see that's starting to come together. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit more texture. I'm gonna show you guys also another way to apply texture. Now, open your adjusting lever and use it as a paintbrush. You guys can see all the little hairs coming off. This is what I like to do when I like to use soft texture and I'm not looking for any aggressive, chunky texture. Now, before we start connecting the sides to the top, I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly wet the hair. Now what we wanna do is we wanna create what I call pre-style. Good to use your fingers, use your fingers to freestyle the hair because that way you can get more of a natural, messy look. So for anyone wondering, I'm using it on, on high heat, low setting. Here in the back, you want to be able to bring it up, scrunch it. Same thing on the other side. see it come to life so now I'm gonna go ahead and start coming from the sides going back to my wall 100 anniversary clipper with the adjust lever fully open and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work right in front of the ear bring the hair and then bring the comb outwards here's my guide here's the hair that I want to cut repeat so now when you look at it it doesn't look just cut off. Now there's more of a blend to it. Flip over comb towards the top. Now we're just gonna respine the edge. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Same thing on this side, what we want to do is we'll pick up the hair and bring the hair and the comb out towards ourselves. So again, this is allowing me to connect the sides to the back without a, a hard and aggressive uh, difference. Now it's blending in towards the back. And again, the clip over the comb on the top. To connect the uh, to connect the top. I'm 
then lastly, we want to use our wall cordless detailer just to clean up around the ears. Now remember, this is a, a T-blade. So the cool thing about this is that the extension on the blade here allows us to get into any tight nooks and crannies. And which is it also is a high precision blade that allows us to get a very precise cut. You guys can see that. Clean up the sides here. And we do the same thing on his other side. Start in front of the ear using the corner of the blade. Behind the ear, come against it. Clean slight, slightly on the front of the sideburn. And then lastly, buy your product of choice. I always like to use a uh, matte product, the dry look. So, I'm big on the uh, pomades and pastes. And then go ahead in the back and uh, work a little bit of separation, flare it out a little bit, giving a little bit of style. And depending again on the product that you use, you can go ahead and piece it. guys have it. Here's a close up modern mullet. Nice little taper on the sides here. Lots of texture and movement in the back. So uh, one of the questions that I saw that someone had said, any tips on cutting around the ear on boys who are ticklish? So the one tip that I will say is I usually try to have their parent grab their attention either with, uh, a, a, with a lollipop because that's what I give kids here. I give lollipops, um, Snickers, Twix, the little mini bite size if their parents are okay with it. And I usually have their parents try to distract them. So that way as they're distracted, I'm able to quickly work on around the ears and especially around the neck area because I notice that the kids are real, real ticklish right in the neck area. Um, anyone else have any questions? Um, hope you guys liked the haircut. Uh, hope you guys liked the cutting techniques. Remember, everything was done with all wall clippers. Lots of uh, lots of the texture, aggressiveness. All right. Well, uh, just want to thank you guys for taking the time out for watching me do this uh, modern mullet. Remember Jay Ramos from Wall Clippers. Um, you guys take care, stay safe.